Pretty much out of nowhere, we get a new trailer for Arcane. It was featured on the fourth day of the LPL. And a bit unfortunately for us, it is in Chinese, so we won't be able to match up any of the voices. But at least it was subtitled. So we still know what the trailer is about. Regardless, you know what time it is. It's time to make some predictions without context, which means that they will be likely wrong. But that won't stop me from doing it. Anyway, because the new trailer was featured on a stream, the quality won't be that good. But also, because all of this footage is copyrighted by Netflix, I can't use any of the video footage. I can only use screenshots. So if you want to get the full experience of the trailer, I recommend watching it yourselves. But now, let's turn a 40 seconds long trailer into a 10 minute long video. Once again, we have no idea who's talking, but as you'll see from the subtitles, they will be describing what the city was like at the very beginning, as well as what is happening in it now. For example, here you can see that they mentioned that at the very beginning, Piltover used to be a bastion of enlightenment. Of course, we have seen this shot before, but this is new, and I can tell you right now, I have no idea what this is. I didn't know that Piltover had a giant Death Star laser, at least not in that form. So it makes me wonder if this giant contraption is somehow related to the Zindelos Incognium Runeterra, which is the other invention which no one really knows how to use, but it is also supposed to be a giant death laser. Alternatively, it is also possible that it is not a weapon and it is just some kind of communication device. In this shot specifically, it is powering down. And if you watch it yourselves, you can even hear the sound of it shutting down. The voice then mentions that they were once a tribe, which can be relating to the fact that Zon stood before Piltover. Zon used to be an ancient Shuriman city called Oshrava Zon, and Piltover was basically built on top of it. So by mentioning tribes, maybe they are really talking about the ancient times. And then, as they say that they are divided, on the left side we can see shots which we have already seen before, from the other trailers. But on the right side, those are entirely new. But unfortunately the frame is really small and so it is really hard to pick up anything. Though we can point out the fact that if you pay attention to the thing that flew by that looks like a pigeon, if you freeze frame it, it actually seems to be a mechanical pet. And the shot zooms out to some kind of a stadium. But I really have no idea what this is. But in the background we can see a face that kinda looks like Jay's. And that could be because Jace should be younger. But since we don't really know how old he is, you know, here he could be as old as someone like Vi. So who knows? Maybe it is the other person, which we will see in just a moment. We then have a shot of a Piltoven Warden, obviously interrogating someone. And that's because in this shot that other person is obviously not happy about some of the questions which they've been asked. Most likely it is the Warden asking about the origins of the pipe which they are holding, which angers the goons behind them, and the other really beefy awesome looking Warden is forced to draw a weapon. For a split of a second there is the shattered glass on the ground, but before that, for only a couple of frames, we can see that someone is kicking something over. I assume this is related to the Jinx shot after that, because it seems like the crashing glass is what made her perk up. And speaking of the Jinx shot, yes, this is the arcade which we have seen in the other trailer. It's the one with the boxing machine at the back. But in that trailer, the entire place was ruined. Well, we're about to see what happened here. Outside, we can see a native Zonite being once again interrogated by the Wardens. And I have a suspicion that this guy is the owner of the arcade. But I could be wrong about it. You'll see why I think that in just a bit. Anyway, as this guy spits on the warden's shoes, the subtitles say that the people here, by which they are referring to Zon, want a better life. We then once again have a shot which we have seen in the other trailers, but here we have a better look at the buildings around. God damn, this place looks beautiful. Like, what is that place in the back? I think that might be the University of Piltover, with the bridge connecting it to the main city. This is where Professor Singed might be pretending to be a good guy. As well as, this might be where Von Yip is right now. But it could also be the Warden's headquarters. Now, here's an interesting thing which we have mentioned on stream. While this shot of the city is really beautiful, 
Notice that on the left side of what I assume is the university, we don't have the giant Death Star beam from the beginning of the trailer. That entire tower, which is supposed to be on the left side, is missing. What you can see here is the ocean line, so it can't be even further to the left. And as a cool fact, on the other side of the sea you can actually see the shores. That is Shurima. Regardless, the giant tower is missing. It is not that thing at the back. Because in the shot where we can see the tower, that thing is still there. And the tower is actually quite close to the city. And since it was pointing to the right, I think it is some kind of communication device. And it was linked to the center of the capital city. Now, since it is not here, one of two things is probably happening. Either this tower was built way in the past, and somehow it was shut down or destroyed before the story of Arcane goes on. Or this tower can be the outcome of what happens in this story. Since it is not here while Vi and Jinx were kids, it is possible that it was built while they were adults. So maybe its construction will be part of the story. Or maybe it was there the entire time and it is just retractable. We then have a look at the nobles of Piltover, which are really just the heads of different rich houses. And this is where we get something really cool, which only the nerdy people probably noticed. This guy wearing the crimson robes is most likely young Jago Medarda, the leader of the Medarda family. You know, the one that Noxus tried to infiltrate a number of times, because they are likely the most powerful family in Piltover. I love these little details. That is, if this ends up being Jago. It could also be just a random noble. Regardless, my favorite person out of all of these is the General Grievous looking guy. Who the heck is that? But anyway, in this shot the subtitles say that the people in Piltover couldn't imagine a better life. A massive contrast to Zorn. And then it cuts to the explosion which was once again shown in the other trailers. But here it was revealed that it wasn't caused by Jinx fiddling with the blue hex devices. Because we can see Jinx present here together with the other two guys that were with Vi and Jinx before. And we know that this is the exact same place as the explosion because of the railings around. So it is likely that this event is not the reason why Jinx was called Powder. Which is something that I theorized before. Then there is a really cool shot of Jinx's grenades. And then there is a massive explosion which likely killed three Wardens. Remember during this time Caitlyn was probably not even a member of the Wardens. So yes I know this Warden has a skirt and I know they have a rifle but this is likely not Caitlyn. Then there is once again a shot from a previous trailer, with the voice saying that they must protect Piltover. So it is likely one of the Wardens talking. And then it cuts to a full-on Zonite riot. And this makes me really excited. I really wanna learn about the conflicts between Piltover and Zone. This entire place is just so awesome. So it will be really cool to see both sides of the coin in such a detail. And this is why I believe that the guy was the owner of the arcade. It's because the wardens straight up throw him through the window. That's why the window was destroyed in the trailer that took place in the future, when Jinx was a lot older. Also here at the back you can actually see Vi. But the reason why this guy might be the owner is because nothing changed to this place since this moment. Interestingly enough, remember the pair of shoes that was hanging in the broken arcade in the last trailer? The symbol of an organized crime, which some of you pointed out can also be the symbol of someone's death? Yeah, if that person died here, those shoes suddenly get explained. We then once again have this shot of a person on a hoverboard, which we have also seen before, though here it is in a much greater detail. And I have to say, Remember how I wished that this would be Faye, the person who lost her leg because of Akali and who was looking for a replacement, which could only really be possible in Zone? Yeah, I still wish this would be Faye, but in these more detailed shots, you can see that she most likely does not have a mechanical leg. So this might not be Faye, but I'm still wishful. Because if you have a look at the mask, it looks a bit kinky, doesn't it? But what this shot reveals is that this new character, which will likely be the lead character of this series, or the lead side character, is not alone, they actually have someone with them. 
And as they fly by as well with a perfect screenshot, we can see that they are also wearing a mask, but theirs looks more like a bat. It even has ears. More on this in just a second. We then have someone with purple vision closing in on a warden, most likely the villain. We then once again have Vi boxing, just like it was in the other trailers. Then we go back to the Zonite Riot, where things are escalating. And then it goes to this split screen showing the same wardens most likely going for the same guy. It's really hard to say what's happening here. Regardless, it didn't go well for the guy. Then we have some really quick interesting shots. Here we can see Vi punching the other person on the hoverboard. That's the guy with the bat mask. And she punched him so hard she probably snapped his neck. I'm not exactly sure if this will be in the series. Remember, some shots for trailers are made up, so that they don't spoil anything. And then we get to this. A close-up of the main character. Now, I would still say it kinda looks kinko, but this looks more mechanical. So maybe it is Faye combining Ionia and Piltover into one design. But yeah, at least we got a close-up of the main character. You can see that they have their hoverboard on their back, they have some kind of a one-handed weapon on the other side, but they throw out their third weapon. This little bag, which upon contact creates these really sharp crystals. This definitely does not look like Piltoven technology. But crystals are more Shuriman. But who knows, if this is Ionian, my theory could still be right. Anyway, Jinx then fights back, and as she fires her gun, you can really see how unstable the purple power is, which is something we have talked about before. And interestingly enough, above her, you can see the main character's bat-like partner. Then we have a quick shot of the wardens using old school rifles. Someone randomly gets tackled, we have no idea who this is, and Jinx keeps firing at the main character. Though notice, every single shot glows purple. So once again, she's using that purpley tech. But that's where the trailer ends. So really, we got two new things out of this. We got a better look at the main character. This one will definitely become a new champion. I truly don't doubt that. That's why they have been so heavily featured before. And also remember, you know, that other roadmap. But on top of that, we also got more context for the story. Yes, the main story will be about Vi and Jinx. And what the heck happened to Jinx? Why is she crazy? And why are her eyes purple now? But in the background we will also get the other overarching story. Zon rebelling against Piltover. And that's the conflict I am really excited about. I love when stories have two sides where both sides are in the right, but someone has to win. I think that storyline will be really interesting. But that is it for this video. Before I was quite hopeful that we might actually get Faye. Now I am a bit less so, because of the lack of mechanical lags. But that doesn't take away from my excitement. I am really looking forward to this. But I am not looking forward to see how many loops I'll have to jump through to cover this entire series. 